So as I mentioned in the last video, I'm going to continue with the transmitter side of the radio. Uh, I've built many uh, CW transmitters in the past, but this will be my first, uh, I guess, from the ground up uh, homebrew SSB transmitter. So I've got a block diagram here, and this is taken from an article which I'll provide the link to called a multi-mode phasing exciter, and that's from all the way back in QST from April 1993. So just walking through some of the components here, voice obviously starts here at the microphone, then passes uh, through this speech amplifier, which performs dual duties of uh, amplifying the signal from the microphone, as well as, well as filtering out unwanted uh, uh, signals outside of the uh, audio frequency. So then we pass it into here in this audio phase shift network, and this is almost exactly the reverse of the uh, phase shift network which we saw in the uh, receiver side. So we have an audio signal coming in here, and then we, we produce an I and a Q audio signal as output. Now this pair of audio signals then passes into the balance modulator section, which consists of these two mixes, one that mixes the I signal, one that mixes the Q signal, with the local oscillator, which is outputting the, uh, the desired transmission frequency at 90 degrees and at zero degrees. So you can see here it's, uh, it's continuing that theme of being exactly the opposite of the, of the receiver. Then finally, we pass on to the RF combiner. Uh, and this is where the signals, so this is the mixed signal here and here. So here's the RF signal in quadrature. And that gets combined back here to produce either the upper or the lower sideband. And that upper or lower sideband uh, is selected either by swapping these LO signals. So in other words, send 90 here and zero here instead of 90 here and zero here, or by swapping the signals coming out of the audio phase shift network. So instead of sending the I signal up here, we send the I signal down here, the Q signal up here. So either of those will affect whether we output the upper or lower sideband. And then finally, the uh, upper or lower sideband RF is sent through this linear amplifier is amplified and then sent out through the antenna. So on the first part of the uh, the first part of the circuit I'm going to build up is the uh, is the audio phase shift network. So just to remind you where that is, so that's this this part here. So here's the circuit uh, for that, uh, and it might be a little hard to see, but I will include links to. Uh, to these circuits and the uh, KiCad schematics and PCBs uh, up on the, uh, the Git repo. So some notes on this. Um, the, this audio phase shift network here is exactly the same as the one that we used in the receiver. So same resistor values, same capacitor values, and obviously these same op amps. The buffer amplifier here buffers the input from uh, to the phase shifter from the uh, input audio signal. It also applies a small amount of gain and finally applies this six volt reference voltage uh, as a mid rail bias to the signal coming in here. This amplitude adjust pot here allows for adjustment of the amplitude of the output I and Q signals here. So as, you, as the signal passes through here, it'll get attenuated differently, but you do need to have a balanced I and Q with exactly the same amplitude here, otherwise you won't get that, uh, uh, the unwanted sideband suppression. Finally, the, re the reference voltage here is produced by a simple resistor divider. Now, I, I really should use uh, an op amp uh, configured as in unity gain as a buffer for this. I mean, all the circuits generally show that, but uh, this works well enough for my purposes. And then finally, there's a double pole, double throw switch here that allows me to select which I, I or Q goes to which, out, uh, which, uh, which output signal. So here's the board. Uh, as you can see, it's uh, part only partially populated at the moment. Uh, let me just zoom into this. 
and then just going uh, through I'll just highlight some of the uh, some of the sections of the board so here's the, in the input signal comes in here this is the amplitude adjust pot here Here's the buffer amplifier it's an LM358 uh, dual op amp and then here's the phase shift network here and this is the uh, reference voltage source here so anyway, what I'll do is I'll populate the rest of this board and uh, we'll come back and do some testing. So here's the finished audio phase shift board built up and ready to test. Um, so here's the, uh, the input signal coming in here. Here's the amplitude adjust pot right here. Here's the uh, buffer amplifier. Here's the phase shift network itself with the two adjustment uh, pots for, for phase adjustment. And here's the power input power supply circuitry here, and then here's that double pole, double pole, double throw switch that uh, allows me to adjust uh, uh, which is the I and which is the Q signal. So to test this, what I'll be doing is, is injecting a uh, one kilohertz signal into here and sampling the I and Q signals out here. I'll use the oscilloscope cursor function to determine the uh, that I've got that uh, exact uh, 90 degree offset that I need. Then what I'll do is I'll vary the frequency to two kilohertz and recheck. Now, one of the uh, things that I, you need to have in, in one of these phase shift networks is at least over the audio frequencies that you're interested in, the phase uh, shift offset is, uh, is pretty much the same. Okay, so let's pan up from the uh, board and uh, check those uh, traces on the oscilloscope. Bear with me, I've just got to zoom in a little bit so you can see that a bit better. It's not quite focusing. So here's the traces for the I and the Q signals, and as you can see, uh, uh, I have been tinkering with this a little bit, so they, they are pretty, pretty much spot on close to uh, 90 degrees offset. But let's, uh, let's uh, vary a few things on the, on the, on the board itself and, um, and see the effect on the trace. So let's vary first that uh, amplitude adjust and so I'm changing the amplitude and adjust and you can see the yellow signal is getting stronger and the the purple trace is getting weaker so obviously this is uh, uh, one of the things that you that you do need to make sure to take care of is that the amplitude of the I and Q signals are as close to um, the same as you can make it and one, one of the things you'll also notice, if I swap around the I and the Q signals, then the actual amplitude of the signals changes too. So I can have it spot on here, and then if I swap over the I and the Q signals, you can see it's a little bit different. Okay, so the next uh, thing I want to do is use the oscilloscope cursor function to confirm that the uh, signals are 90 degrees out of phase one another. So the first thing I want to do is just make sure that they have the same amplitude here. So I've turned on the white cursors here and uh, just to make sure that the, uh, the the purple and the yellow traces are of the same amplitude. Adjusting that uh, amplitude adjust pot is necessary. So that's I've got that as close as I'm going to get it to uh, to the same there. So what I can do now is move on to measuring the actual difference between the the two signals. So now what I want to do is uh, measure the time difference between where the purple trace crosses the zero line and the yellow trace crosses the zero line. And that should be as close to possible as 90 degrees out of phase. So if we're looking at a one kilohertz signal, the full 360 degrees is one millisecond. So this is a quarter of a way of that full um, 360 degrees, so we should be looking at a quarter of that between here and here, or around about 250 millis uh, microseconds. So let's adjust the, uh, the X and the Y cursors to put that exactly where it crosses. So that's the start of the trace here, and that's all the way, that's right about here. Let's move to the other crossing point. That's about there, and now I can use uh, X2 minus X1 to find out the difference. And you can see there that the difference between the two is 255 microseconds, 
which is about five microseconds off. So let's uh, adjust the, uh, let's adjust that. I need uh, to uh, reduce the, the difference between those two. I'm actually going the wrong way there. So let, let me go the other way. There we go. Let's switch back to X1. Move that a little bit in. Then switch back to X2 minus X1 and see what the difference is. Now I'm in exactly 250 microseconds difference between the yellow trace and the purple trace. So that's basically a fairly analog way of de 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 determining the phase difference between those two signals. Um, what I might do now is change the uh, uh, input frequency to 2 kilohertz, and let's see what that difference is. It should be uh, cl uh, as close as possible to uh, a 90 degree phase shift. Um, you know, as I said before, the, the, the whole point of this is, is that you have a fairly invariant phase shift um, with, with different input uh, frequencies. So let's do that next. Okay, so here we are at uh, 2 kilohertz. So let's uh, do the same thing, adjust X1. So it's at the crossing point there. Now adjust X2. That's about as close as I can get it. So let's now go back to X2 minus X1. You can see here it's 130 uh, microseconds, which is off from the 125 microseconds, which uh, which it should be. So let's uh, let's kind of zoom in a bit on that. Um, hopefully, we can get a little bit better accuracy. X1. Bear with me. I'm just going to adjust this. It's about there. X2. Whoops. I always forget to press that button. X2 is around about there-ish, and then X2 minus X1, well it's 125.6 microseconds. So, uh, so obviously this is a very analog way of determining the phase difference between the two signals and uh, you know these, uh, these, these pixels are quite, quite big here. So, uh, but anyway, that confirms, now I didn't adjust anything there between the one kilohertz signal and the two kilohertz signal at least as far as the uh, the pots on the board go so that does confirm at least between one and two kilohertz I've got a pretty uh, pretty good invariant phase shift between those two signals so that's uh, that's the good thing um, so what do I to move on to next uh, after the uh, the phase shift board which is which is now complete is the is the balance modulator portion of the circuit. So I'll end this video here now, and then in the next video we'll start building up the balance modulator section, uh, which uh, mixes the audio signals with your local oscillator and gets those uh, gets those two um, uh, mixed RF signals there. So that's to come in the next video.